Welcome back, and I've got another brilliant experiment to show you today. It's a really, really important experiment in the history of physics. What we're going to look at is the charge to mass ratio of the electron. So to do this experiment, what we need to do is we need to swing an electron into a circular motion. Um, so I've got my Toltron tube here, and it's slightly different from the ones you might have seen earlier in my videos. This one has two electron guns, but the gun we're going to use is one that points vertically upwards. And what we then are going to do is deflect that beam with a magnetic field going through the tube into a circular motion around the inside of the tube. And because there's a low pressure gas in here, we'll get some ionization, so we'll be able to see that beam glowing slightly green. So let's wire up our vertical electron gun. And you've heard me say before that my physics teacher always taught me, wire everything up in front of your students. So here we go for the filament, 6.3 volts at about two amps and I need to uh, select the filament to the vertical electron gun. So there we go, that's that one. Uh, that's going to get nice and hot, and electrons are going to come off its surface, or maybe it's going to heat a cathode. So uh, let's make it very negative, and we'll repel the electrons off it. So there we go. Uh, in this case, to about 150 volts. Um, and our anode is we've over here, so we'll connect to our anode and 150 volts. So let's now turn this on and see if we can see the uh, short length of vertical electron beam in this tube. Okay, so I've darkened the room. I'll turn on the power supply. There we go. And we'll just wait for the heater to heat up a little bit. I can just begin to see it glowing orange there. And then I'll turn up the accelerating voltage to about 150 volts. And there you go. Um, I hope you can see that on the camera, but I'll do a close-up. There's our vertical beam. And what we're now going to do is put a magnetic field through the tube between the camera and me. And we're going to deflect that beam into a circular path. So the next thing we've got to do is create the magnetic field that runs through the tube. And if you think about it, the electron beam's going this way. We've got the uh, magnetic field going through the tube and you can use left hand rules and things, uh, but now's not the time for that. And we can bend the beam at 90 degrees to that. So to do that, we're going to use some Helmholtz coils. And uh, these have the advantage of giving a fairly uniform field if we wire them up properly. So there's one coil, and here's the other, and also you can see through them, so you can see the beam quite nicely. So to get a magnetic field, uh, we need to come into the Helmholtz coil from a low voltage power supply, um, and we need about two amps flowing through these or thereabouts. Out of that one, into the next coil, and back to the power supply. So quite a complicated arrangement here, 6.3 volts for the filament heater, uh, 150 volts for the accelerating anode, and finally a separate DC power supply, uh, giving us a low voltage but a reasonable current to get these coils to become magnetic. So let's turn it on, and then I'll turn up the magnetic field and watch what happens to our vertical beam. So back in the dark room, let's turn on uh, the power supply to the electron gun. So firstly, I'm turning on uh, the heater and just letting it warm up a little bit. And then I'm going to turn up the accelerating voltage. And there's our vertical beam. And now we want to deflect it into a circle. So I'm going to my low voltage power supply and putting some current in the Helmholtz coils. And now let's put some magnetic field through the tube between you and me. And there we go. The magnetic field is bending the electron beam into a rather lovely circular path. So I've zoomed in a bit so you can see it a little bit better. 
So there's our vertical beam forming as the heater warms up. And now let's turn on the magnetic field. And there we go. The electron beam bent into a lovely circular path. And as we increase the magnetic field, that circular radius will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, the magnetic field is not exactly at 90 degrees uh, to the axis of the tube, so I can see we're getting a little helical shape here, but it doesn't matter. It's a reasonably good circle. So whilst we've got this working, uh, what's this got to do with the charge to mass ratio of an electron? Well, uh, the charge on the electron wasn't known. Um, the mass of the electron wasn't known. Uh, Millikan came along and did some work on the charge on an electron and bending it into an arc allows us to calculate the charge to mass ratio. So if we know the charge on the electron, we can then work out its mass. And the way we do that with this piece of apparatus is we need to really know two things very specifically. Uh, we need to know the magnetic field strength due to the Helmholtz coils. Um, that can be calculated. Um, it's not a particularly easy thing to do. Or it can be measured with something called a Hall probe. And we also need to know the radius of this um, circle that we've made. Now, the radius will change depending on how fast the electrons are going. So the other thing we need to know is the accelerating voltage. And if I reduce the accelerating voltage, you can see the effect uh, is such that the electron beam um, changes the radius that it has. So what I'm doing now is reducing the accelerating voltage and increasing the accelerating voltage. So there's a lot of physics in this experiment and it's not particularly easy to understand. But remember that electrons, when they're traveling in a magnetic field, feel a force at 90 degrees to the direction they're moving and 90 degrees to the direction of the magnetic field. It's a bit confusing because if you're familiar with left and right hand rules, remember electrons are negative. So uh, they are going from a region that's negative to a region that's positive. So remember that the current is in the opposite direction and that's a mistake a lot of people make. A few other bits to notice. Did you notice how the radius of the ring that we made got bigger and bigger as we turned up the accelerating voltage. Well, if you think about it, what's going on here is the electrons want to go in a straight line. They're being forced into a circle, so they're feeling a centripetal force, which is equal to mv squared upon r. And if they go faster, you're going to need a bigger force to bend them into a circle. So if we turn up the accelerating voltage, they're going faster, but we haven't turned up the magnetic field, so they will form a circle of a bigger radius. Now, it's the magnetic field that forces them into a circle, so if the centripetal force is mv squared over r, that must be caused by the magnetic field, which is BeV, or BQV, if it's not electrons. So I do hope you enjoyed that experiment. These are lovely pieces of apparatus and not everyone gets to see them or they don't get this experiment demonstrated to them. They get rather simpler things shown, just the electron guns. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.